<sighs> All right, let's see if I even remember how to do this. Hey, what's up YouTube? Mike the Manic Geek here. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a long time since I last made a video for you guys. Sorry about that. Life just got in the way. Uh, we're back on track now to start releasing some more content again. Uh, but consider this a sort of soft relaunch of the channel, because there's a couple things that I want to do differently moving forward. I'll probably go into more detail with it in another video at a later date and time, but for right now, the main thing I wanted to discuss with you all is this. The computer that's going to be producing all of this content. Meet the Herald. Uh, this is a platform update that I did recently that was also a, uh, a mod project that was sponsored in part by Antec. Thank you so much for supplying what you did, guys. Um, and it's basically themed visually after the Silver Surfer and Galactus. Now, as some of you may be familiar with, back in the day when I introduced my computer, I was using an AM3 Plus platform with an 8350K in it. Suffice it to say, until this year, I had still been using that platform. What I went ahead and did was use the Antec P8 as the basis for my build. Uh, this was supplied by Antec as a review sample, but I've done a little bit of modifying to it. Uh, I got the front panel to allow some more airflow through, uh, got a second glass panel on the back of it, and did some uh, swapping out of the PCI expansion slot covers. Now this whole thing is going to be a work in progress, so the way you see it right now isn't necessarily going to be the way it stays. There's going to be things that evolve and change in it. Starting off, we have the motherboard. This is the Aorus X470 Gaming 7 Wi-Fi. This board is probably a little overkill for the CPU that I'm using, but I wanted to go with a platform that was going to allow me more upgrade mobility in terms of getting like an 8-core or potentially a 10-core or more CPU if the rumors that are current on Zen 2 hold to be true. I also like that it has a buttload of features on it, and I will take a closer look at this motherboard in a future video. Matter of fact, that holds true for most of the stuff in the build right now. I will go over some more on these components in later content pieces. For right now, I just want to get you guys introduced to everything. The processor is, of course, a Ryzen processor. This is the Ryzen 5 2600. I currently have it clocked at 4 GHz at approximately 1.36 volts V-Core. Um, I can actually push this chip to 4.1 across all 6 cores and 12 threads but ambient temperatures in a house with no AC get kind of toasty this time of year, so thermally I've not been able to sustain it. Cooling that processor as well as moving air through the rest of the case are products supplied by Scythe. The heatsink is the Mugen 5 Revision B, which I also did a pretty lengthy overview on uh, in a former video. Again, link in the description. As well as five Scythe Kaze Flex 120 PWM fans. I went with these mostly because of the visual aesthetic. Also, I happen to have them on hand, so it worked out really well. As it turns out, I'm not getting peak temperatures any higher than around 77C on my 2600, even with ambient temperatures being this high. The RAM I went with is G-Skill Ripjaws 5. This particular kit was not actually on the QBL list for this motherboard, but it wound up posting anyway, and I was actually even able to use its XMP profile for 3000 megahertz operating speeds. Could I push it a little bit further? Maybe, but I'm not really that versed with DDR4 overclocking right now, so I need to do a little bit more research and uh, just fiddling around with it on my own before I really commit to any sort of decent overclocking with these DIMMs. For the GPU, I'm still using my holdover graphics card, but it's by no means a slouch. The EVGA GTX 980 for the win edition card. Now this one actually came out of the box running at uh, reference design speeds, but it was still branded as a for the win card, which made it kind of unique for the time. I, I am able to overclock this to approximately 1501 megahertz if ambient temperatures remain under control. And as far as 1080p gaming is concerned, it's still crushing it there, so I'm not really feeling the hurt yet. For the power supply, Antec also supplied this one for us. This is their HCP850 fully modular power supply, which was actually OEM'd by Delta, which makes it kind of an interesting unit in that the cabling doesn't necessarily have a set way to plug into the power supply. Uh, again, I'll go over that in a future content piece. But it's an 80 plus platinum power supply, mostly black cables, 
and they happen to be the perfect length for cable management in the Antec P8. So much so that at some point I am going to get custom braided cables. Um, leave a comment down below. How would you do the, uh, the cable sleeving for a build like this? And last but certainly not least, my storage configuration is also a carryover from my previous build in a Kingston HyperX SSD at 240 gigs for the operating system and a three terabyte Western Digital Red drive acting as my mass storage and backup. Eventually, I am going to be moving to all solid state storage with this computer. I'm probably going to go with something like a 250 gig NVMe drive for the OS, a 480 gig NVMe as a scratch disk, and then two 2 terabyte SSDs. Let me know what you think down in the comments, what kind of uh, storage configuration you'd go with for a rig like this. Also, give me some ideas down below of some ways that I can move this build forward and make it more extra. I'm definitely thinking about going water cooling with it at some point, but picking out the components visually is proving to be a little challenging for me. Uh, plus, there are certain things that I would have to change about the build, including getting rid of the hard drive cage down in the basement, which can be done, but I need to have my storage set up first. But anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Toss me a thumbs up on the video if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. Get subscribed if you haven't done so already. Uh, I'm gonna be committing to at least one video every two weeks for you guys. And I expect you to hold me to that on Instagram and Twitter. Follow me there if you haven't done so already. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.